So I highlighted some of our uh, team members and we had Richard there, our trustee, because now we're going to be jumping into the Fair Education Alliance strategy. And uh, that is led by a small number of us. You'll have seen us across the past two days, virtually and in person with our backgrounds. And we're going to be sharing a bit more about our activities, the team who are responsible for these different elements and how you can reach out to us individually now that you have identified us, seen our moves and uh, know who's really supporting us from our board of advisors and brilliant board of trustees as well. So as we move forward into the strategy session, I want to share three key elements about membership of the Fair Education Alliance overall. So we are 250 members, which is phenomenal. And Ben Gadsby earlier, when you came back from the networking group, you shared, I've learned so much about what's happening. And that's a key thing I want to take going forward. So having that knowledge, having the awareness of what else is happening across the membership is absolutely crucial to us playing our part. So Ellie, if you wouldn't mind going to the next slide, three key things that underpin our approach. The first is the value add. So you are going to get out of the alliance what you put in. This is about member-led activity. We're 11 people and we run programs as well as do the backbone infrastructure. So it's a quite a small team, but we know that where members have put in the effort, not just them as the primary contact, but across their organizations, they have seen the benefits in terms of their organizational impact, helping them to improve their scale, helping them to target greater, as well as their profile and that systemic impact. So value add, you're gonna get in what you put, what you, pardon me, get out what you put in. The second is that we are here to support. So our job as a backbone organization is to take away the pain to collaboration. That's what we want to do. So our ideal membership is that you have these brilliant ideas, you have the expertise, the lived experience, and we want to support you to make those elements a reality. So literally, if you want something to happen, just ask us. We're going to be sharing all of our email addresses in the chat and in the follow-up so you know who to go to for what. But if you have any questions at all, always just in part of me, always just email info at fairducation org.uk. It's coming in the chat right now. So save that, put it in your address book, and we will make it happen. And the third element is that we are a movement. So we want to use our collective messaging frequently and consistently. So you'll have heard Paul Dreschler yesterday. You'll have heard Sam talk about this. This isn't just about a moment in time. When we're looking at the reality, the stark reality of inequality across all of England, we know that this is not just going to be about the FEA, myself, Sam, our trustees talking about this. This is going to be about all of us. And so key elements about this is you're on the call today. That's amazing. But we want you to spread this to all of your colleagues. So we're going to ask you to be taking down actions. We'll come to that in one moment. But before we jump in, we want to just do a quick poll. So Daniel, if you wouldn't mind pulling it up, this is about your understanding of our strategy to date and how you feel as an FBA member. And we really encourage your honesty on this one. It will help us to design, to deliver, and to work with you collaboratively. So if you can share your responses to those four questions that should be up right now, it is around the uh, FBA strategy is clear to you. You're able to make time to participate in the activities across the Alliance. We know capacity can be an issue. About how you feel heard in raising your perspective across the Alliance. And also about our communication. So your knowledge, is it timely? Is it effective? Is it easily accessible? So this just gives us a flavor, a little baseline. So thank you as I see those coming in. We'll be getting your feedback as a survey at the end of this session. So a quick forms about questions, concerns, ideas, and we'll also be having a post summit survey, but this really helps us understand. So we'll keep that open for a couple um, more seconds and then I will hand over to Sam. 
Fantastic. So over the last couple of days, we focused on looking back and looking forward. And yesterday, we talked you through all of the different activities that we we're doing across um, the last year gone by. And we heard the brilliant video from all of our members talking about that. And we've taken stock of where we are now. So Ellie, if you can just go to the next slide. And three big reflections that have emerged in the last couple of months about where we are are three uh, are, are on the screen now. So firstly, we're in a situation that already severe educational inequality that we knew existed in 2019 pre-pandemic has been exacerbated. And we've seen that in our report card um, last month, um, and we know it from a range and plethora of reports from many of you as members, from the Education Policy Institute, EEF, NFER, and many others. But secondly, we've heard, and we heard quite clearly from Paul Dreschler yesterday, there's worryingly a lack of outrage about this. This isn't the pressing issue for most people in society. And it's not widely recognized or noted that there's a connection between educational inequality and the fact that so many kids from different backgrounds are not getting the opportunity they deserve. That's then leading to these other social issues that we're discussing in separate forums. So whether that be social cohesion, skill shortages in the employment market, crime, welfare, etc. And then finally, that we observe that the Fair Education Alliance is still um, very unique, but even we um, still are prone to working in silos. It's easier day to day to bury my head in my individual priorities or my organization's priorities, or even the thematic silo. If I'm really passionate about well-being or mental health, or someone else is really passionate about parental engagement, to focus on that and only that. But actually, we need to come together and create cross-sector working, cross-thematic working to create a whole different system. And that's where we start in terms of thinking for the year ahead as to where we need to focus our strategy. So we're now, I'm now going to pass to, um, I'll just do a brief recap. So if you can go to the next slide, Ellie. Next one. So this is just a reminder, hopefully this is very familiar to you now about where we all are and what we're doing here. So we have our shared vision that no child success is limited by their socioeconomic background, measured by our fair education impact goals. But to get there, we have all agreed that we need to see an inclusive education system, which does all four of those four things, develops the whole child, engages parents and communities of all backgrounds, supports teachers and leaders in the most disadvantaged areas, and prepares young people for their life after school, accessing employment, further education or training. And to do that, we can't work alone. The FEA is about creating a unified collective message for vision and action, those priorities, creating connectivity and coordination across the ecosystem. So the relationships we've been building over the last two days at dinners last night across the country in the networking, diversifying leadership of the collective agenda so that it's not the same people having the same conversations, but actually we're giving um, people from all geographies, all ethnicities, all ages and young people a seat at the table to drive this agenda. And last but not least, that we're identifying very impactful initiatives across our alliance and beyond and helping those to scale systemically and based on need. So our three strands of activity are collective action, policy and influencing and scaling impact. And we're now going to be doing an exercise to take you through what that looks like um, in, 20, in 2022 and how you can get involved. Over to you, Gina. Thanks, Sam. All right, so brilliant. We are going to talk you through about nine different activities right now. So our collective action working groups, our report card, our submissions to inform policy, our award programs and scaling your own leadership, and then all of our underpinning activities around our communications, our events, our digital membership tools, and we're going to be launching our youth engagement strategy. So you'll hear from Becca about that. So we're going to send the capture sheet. It also got sent around in yesterday's email to you. It's in the chat right now. C1 has just sent that and it's in your email yesterday. 
It is a Word document, so hopefully you can just open it up and edit. But if not, no worries. Grab a notebook, be on your computer, and just type your notes. What we mainly want to get out of this is about your understanding for how you can get involved. What are your ideas for that? What are your actions for that? And then any questions. So like I mentioned, we're going to have a quick form after this session so you can submit your questions, you can submit anything you're uncertain about or areas you're particularly interested in. But to help understand as you go along, we are gonna convey quite a lot of information who to be in contact with. So hopefully this should help you to organize as you go through. And this will be recorded. So one of the key actions that we do suggest is for you to take this recording once we share it with you later on this week and play it for your teams, because this isn't just about you on the call. This is about that entire movement of your colleagues, of your alumni, of your mentors, who are also members of the Fair Education Alliance, and together we can go so much further. So I am going to ask you, if you wouldn't mind giving a little bit of a, a indication, maybe a thumbs up in the uh, chat, um, or on your emotions, if you have that. I can see one person too. Great, we're having a few people coming through with some chats. If you're having any issues with that document, please don't hesitate to just give a shout in the chat and we can help you with that. Or like I mentioned, just feel free to grab a notebook. All right, so Sam, over to you for collective action. Brilliant. So the first activity that we wanted to talk you through is our collective action working groups. And we have many of these that run um, throughout the year. The first one to mention is our overarching campaign working group. And this happens monthly and it's open to all members to join to meet with us regularly to frame and develop the Fair Education Alliance's overall messaging and collective agenda. So we ask you what's going on in your worlds, in your day to day. It helps us with insights from the front line and it helps us shape what our collective messaging can be. So that happens monthly. We then have a range of topics, which you can see here from tuition advocacy, delivery, well-being inclusion, literacy, addressing racial inequalities in education head on and parental engagement that bring together organizations and individuals who are interested in taking collective action on these subjects or sharing insights and helping each other to increase our impact in these areas. These happen at different levels of regularity throughout the year. Um, and you can find out, I'll tell you in a second, about how you can get involved. And then last but not least, in Navy there at the bottom, we are constantly um, considering new groups and open to suggestions for collective action ideas from you. So the ones we're currently considering doing are a supporting teachers and leaders one, supporting young people with their post-16 destinations, um, a peer-to-peer -peer learning group on impact and evaluation, and one on English as a second language. So we can just go to the next slide. So the way that you can get involved in these, you can see a picture of the wonderful Lauren Turner on your screen there, who is our comms manager and also our collective action um, guru. And so to sign up to existing groups, contact Lauren on that email there, or express your interest in um, the proposed groups that we've mentioned, or suggest your own group. You might want to set up a, um, a, a, sub, a topic that we haven't yet mentioned that relates to our collective priorities. And you can take a lead as members and do that. Next slide, please. So the next activity is our report card, which has been mentioned lots over the last couple of days. Now, this is a document that's there, ready for you to use right now. Um, so someone's gonna put a link in the chat to it again now for you to download. Um, this is a synthesis of all of the evidence and um, reports on educational inequality in 2021. It was actually authored by the fantastic Anissa Zayman, the young ambassador that opened today's um, summit. Many of you will have seen her. Um, and then it has our collective calls to action, messaging on what we believe needs to happen in order to tackle that inequality that is arguably worse than it's ever been before. So next slide, how you can do this, download, read it if you haven't already, learn those messages, share it, share it um, um, 
widely, but specifically make a plan for how you and your colleagues in your organization can use the messaging from the report card in the coming weeks and months so that we are all speaking in one voice. You may focus on one particular element of the report card in your work, but what we need as a movement is to be all speaking about the holistic um, picture that we need um, and the system that we want to create. So use this report as, as that document to help you do that. Next slide, please. So the third area is, is another policy and influencing one. Over the last year, we've done, um, well, over the last few years, we've done a range of submissions and consultations, letters to the Prime Minister is the one on, on the right there, um, responses to um, APPG requests for information, et cetera, et cetera. Next slide. Um, again, Lauren is your person here. So what we want is suggestions from you. As Gina said, we're only 11 people. We could only do so many submissions and consultations ourselves, but we want you to get in touch and suggest things that we might want to collectively respond to, but then help us lead that. So lead subgroups of FEA members in producing these, and then we can do the legwork in collating signatures, getting buy-in and building that consensus to make sure that again, we're speaking with one voice. Brilliant. So I'm just putting in the chat that if you do have any questions as we go along, do feel free to write them in here. And if we have some time, we'll try to answer some of them, as well as we'll put in the form afterwards and follow up. So on the scaling impact. So you have heard from our scaling award winners, from our entrepreneurship award winners, and from our innovation award winners, and Siwan, Cheyenne, and Tisha, who lead the awards. And uh, hopefully you are incredibly inspired by them and excited to collaborate for them with them. So these three awards we run as a way to nurture and critically to scale impactful initiatives to get to the areas of greatest need. So the Innovation Award is open to the public. So a key opportunity for you is to be sharing this with your networks with it could be a young person who has been one of the individuals on your programs, if you're a delivery organization, who has an idea for how they want to tackle education. It could be yourselves, <laughs> who we've had, for example, Impact Ed, which started as an employee of the Brilliant Club and spun out. Um, or it could be one of the individuals in your network, some of your alumni or mentors. So we will be uh, launching the applications next year in 2022. We'll announce timings in the spring, so spread the word for that. Our Entrepreneurship Award is designed specifically for members, as is our Scaling Award. So these are two opportunities for you to get in and apply for. So the Entrepreneurship Award run by Tisha, as you heard about from our winners earlier today, is a year-long program of support to help an individual within the organization if they have an idea for an internal innovation to start up and to launch that and embed it. So again, applications uh, will open next year and we'll be announcing those dates in the spring. What we do know is that we will be opening applications for our scaling award in summer 2022. So for the scaling award, if you have an impactful initiative and you want to launch, pardon me, you want to scale it, then applications are opening in summer and you can get in touch with C1. But that's only talking about if you want to apply. You can see here all of these brilliant individuals who have supported either with selection or during the incubator and training for the award winners. So if you're interested in doing that and taking part in supporting this generation of award winners, this can be you. And we're always looking for support in areas like business models, like scaling strategies, marketing communication. So um, we're really excited to be able to leverage your expertise to support the award winners at their earlier stages. So key ways I've just shared to get involved, you can email C1 if you want to apply for the scaling award um, and her email is there. But if you're interested in the dates for the Innovation Entrepreneurship Awards, we'll be announcing next year. So keep your eye on our bulletin, which I'll be coming to shortly. Um, and if you want to offer any support following up from today um, or over the course of the year, just email info at Fair Education and we'll pass it on to Tish and Cheyenne. There's one other element about scaling impact that we're really excited to launch right now, which is around scaling your leadership. So some of you have uh, known that I've 
had the, uh, yeah, I guess the honor to participate in the big leadership adventure as a guinea pig a couple of years ago in the two-year program. And we have a few probably familiar faces here, and I'm not sure if you're still on this call. If you are, I hope you're not too embarrassed. Um, and Seb Chaplow um, from Citizens and then Whole Education. So these were my colleagues on this journey. And this is run by Peter Hyman, who you've just heard from, and Liz Robinson, who you heard from earlier today, the co-directors of Big Education. And we're really excited that we are going to be doing an FEA member Big Education Leadership Training. So these are the big eight leadership tools supporting you in terms of not only the line management and team management, but also that systemic thinking and how you can further develop. So it's a taster. It's a two-day training rather than a two-year training. Um, but we're going to, of course, have dinner the night before, maybe at Pizza Express if you're lucky and like last night. And uh, we will then have two full days of training. So the actions are to save the dates um, for March 3rd in the evening and then March 4th and 5th both days. And we already have the link to sign up. So we're launching it right now. Uh, that's in the chat. And you can get the discount code, which is FEA Discount March. So this is led by Big Education, but in partnership um, with the Fair Education Alliance and a great chance for us to network and continue to build those connections as well as scale our leadership. Great, thank you. So then we'll go on to our weekly bulletin. So our weekly bulletin, we had 51 that we sent out over the past year. So we're not missing any dates in that. Your inbox will be receiving that um, every Thursday and then a few special bulletins throughout the year. So in the bulletin, we are sharing key information from across the membership. So this is from you that we then again, take away that pain of collaboration, that pain of sharing, condense everything, put it into one place and give you that what's happening in the sector, what's happening across the membership, what's happening across the Alliance and ways for you to get involved. So you can see the sign up link just at the bottom there. And if we go to the next slide, there is a big ask, which is if you're not already signed up, please click on that link right now, put in your name, your organization, sign up to it. But critically, get on WhatsApp, get on the email and just ping that across to your team so that they're up to date with what's happening and we can really spread the activity. So it's not a bottleneck just having to come through one individual at each organization, but we can have multiple individuals involved and they can feel part of this movement as well. And if you want to submit any content, you'll know how jam-packed they are and how vibrant they are. So just submit the content to Lauren um, and she will include that every week. Great, Sam, over to you. Fab. So I feel like this is a lot of information. So hopefully you're either jotting it all down on your pieces of paper or you've managed to fill in the template. Lots of ways to get involved. Um, so we'll move now to the two big events um, that we have each year. Um, one of them we're at right now, but it will happen again next autumn, our FEA annual summit. Um, the other one is the Fair Education Alliance Impact Festival, which happens in spring. Now, Abby has been working behind the scenes. You can see her picture there in orchestrating all of this. And she's your person for all things Impact Festival and Annual Summit. So the Impact Festival, for those of you who don't know, is a um, event that happens in the spring to bring members together to learn from each other peer to peer on topics such as impacts and evaluation, legal structures, um, operational delivery in remote areas, or topics such as um, creating well-being and inclusion um, in the mainstream school system. So it's all topics suggested by you that you want to learn from each other's expertise and then facilitated by us in a series of sessions. Last year, we did it over two weeks um, and we may or may not do similar this year, um, but we, it's all about how you can learn from each other um, and support each other to increase each other's impact, but also work collectively on these things as well. And then the annual summit in the autumn is a repeat of what we've done today, coming together to celebrate, look forward, look back, um, and hear from some fantastic speakers. So how to get involved with this, email Abigail with any suggestions as to what you want the Impact Festival to cover in 2022. 
volunteer to lead sessions for your fellow members. This event cannot happen without you leading sessions for each other. Um, and then make suggestions or offers of support for next year's summit as well. Great. Next slide. So we're moving on towards the end. So we have digital membership tools and then the youth engagement strategy. So this is the last that I'll be sharing before handing over to Becca. So our digital membership tools led by Daniel, some of you might know Emma, who has been with us for the past few years. And she, I saw her last night at dinner. She came to the Islington Pizza Express with Alexandra, her baby. So that was lovely. And the great news is Daniel is equally as incredible. And he joined us just over two months ago to be leading on the digital membership tools in Emma's absence. So these tools are about targeting, they're about connection, and they're about collaboration. So you can see here some of the prototypes that Daniel's been working on behind the scenes after having consulted with 45 of you, our members, on how you would like these designs to help increase your organizational impact. And this picks up so much on the themes we were hearing yesterday um, around showing the areas of greatest need and then going to the areas of greatest need. Actually, that data, taking that data from publicly available data sets, taking it from different sources, and compiling it into one place so that you can understand on each of the themes, on post-16 destinations, on well-being, where are the big issues, where are the greatest areas of greatest need, and then see where different members are working to be able to understand the, the ecosystem and then connect with those organizations to help you get there and to collaborate effectively. So it's a really interesting model that is about scaling to the areas of greatest need. We know oftentimes there are barriers around capacity, around having the different strategies to get to those, to those areas. This is one tool to help that happen. And it's a collaborative way of making it happen. And it's also a really interesting um, element about place. So place at the heart of what we do and being able to understand place better and work collectively on place. So thank you for everybody who's been involved in creating the tool so far. We're going to be launching these tools in 2022. And in the meantime, on the next slide, you can see Daniel's email address. And so if you're keen to support on the prototype, Daniel would love to hear from you. We have been testing different options and we're in the um, phase right now to be able to um, take that to the next stage. So email Daniel if you're keen for your organization to test how we target, how we connect, and how we collaborate across the network. And then we'll be announcing more about the uh, next stages in the bulletin, so keep your eyes on that. And critically, get ready to share data. The tools are only as good as the data that you as members put in. And so we'll be going out in 2022 for a big data collection. So understanding where you're currently working, gathering the postcodes or uh, the URN numbers from the schools that you're working in um, so we can show that systemically. And then we'll be um, contacting you for who in your organization is doing what so that you have a better understanding of the different individuals that are involved in the, in the Alliance and how to work with them. So really excited. Watch this space and connect with Daniel and Digital Membership Tools. So now I'm going to hand over to Becca. Becca is our youth engagement manager who has been doing an extraordinary job of co-creating our youth strategy and we're delighted to launch it here today. So Becca over to you. Thanks Gina and Sam. I am super excited to share with you all today about our new youth engagement strategy. So you saw yesterday when we kicked off with the fantastic video from the Young Literacy Pirates we had Alfie and Anissa taking the lead this morning and our incredible trustee Lamaje in the panel in the previous session. The Fair Education Alliance wants to ensure young people are central to everything we do because we believe that's the only and the right way for us to reach our shared goals. Why? Because one of the key reasons for the Fair Education Alliance is we believe it will take that broad range of stakeholders to affect change and make the education system fairer. So we need businesses, educationalists, the third sector, but equally young people to be a part of that too. And not only do we want to listen to young people and share the power we hold as adults when it comes to decision making and collective action, but we also want to support, promote and celebrate the actions young people are taking 
and the choices they're making to bring about positive change. And this all links to what Sam was just saying on with the Alliance objectives at the start of the session. So we can go to the next slide, please. So how did we get to today's launch of the youth engagement strategy? Well, with the support of the Pairs I Will Fund Young People and You. We started in May with members to understand what they wanted this strategy to do for them. We were joined by a youth consultant called Naomi who, uh, and the uh, IWIL ambassadors of the Education Advisory Council who helped us decide how to involve young people and design the process and the principles that should guide this process. We then very excitingly recruited 12 young people aged 14 to 24 with different experiences of the education system and they became our youth strategy group. You met Alfie this morning, um, who's fantastic. And they met for six online workshops to develop a theory of change, design inclusive and meaningful youth engagement activities and build the strategy document. And there was also broader cons consultation with other young people and members and some people who I can see joining us today who came along for that fantastic joint member and youth strategy group workshop. If we can go to the next slide, please. So what were the outputs of all of this? Well, the first thing we did was come together to agree our definitions. So you can see on screen now some of the definitions from the young people at those different workshops and how we agreed that youth engagement should be the umbrella term for these different types of work with young people. So we've got youth voice that's actively seeking the opinion of young people, listening to their feedback and supporting them to share their experiences and ideas. Youth participation, so the meaningful involvement of young people in decision making on the topics that interest or affect them. And finally, youth social action, so activities young people do themselves to make a positive difference for others or the environment. And then if we can go to the next slide, you can see uh, a very <laughs> stripped back version of the theory of change that we developed, which uh, I'll share um, the full document in the notes, but uh, I won't go into the full detail here, but this was the overarching objective that the young people set um, for youth engagement in education. And that's young people, including those who face barriers to education, uh, are respected and heard in all the decisions affecting their education. And we divided this into the two key areas of work. So that's young people are involved as equal partners in the work of the Fair Education Alliance, and that the Fair Education Alliance improves support and celebrate youth social action. And so within these two, we've got uh, sort of existing activities that we're embedding youth engagement into. So like today, young people in events, we're gonna have young people involved more in our collective action and policy and influencing. They're gonna continue to support the award selection with youth judges and then support the award winners um, as they uh, scale their impact having young trustees, which we already have with the fantastic Lamaday and Zulam. And then if we go to the next slide, you'll see some of the new things that we're gonna be doing. So uh, what I'm super excited about is there's gonna be a new youth steering group. So this is 15 young people aged 14 to 24 who are gonna provide leadership for all youth engagement across the Alliance. And many of you have been involved in this recruitment. We had 71 phenomenal applications from across the country. And that included young people who are too often overlooked. So excluded young people, young carers, young offenders, young people with special educational needs or disabilities. And we have our selection workshop this Saturday, which is gonna be incredibly difficult to get down to a final 15 before the first meeting in December. And then this group are gonna be involved in uh, all our work across the Alliance. We've then got our youth bulletin. And this is similar to the bulletin that Gina was just mentioning, but it's going out to young people. And it's gonna include updates from the youth steering group, opportunities for youth engagement, links to training and funding and resources and showcasing youth social action happening um, around the country. And any young person will be able to sign up to this via our social media pages, our website. And so we hope to have an active network of young people who want to take action on reducing inequality in education. And they can be there to support the membership as well. If we've got uh, young people where we need to hear more from them or there's opportunities for them. 
And then finally, um, and possibly most relevant to this group, is a new collective action working group on youth engagement. So this is bringing together members and other key stakeholders to problem solve, develop and share good practice and advocate for greater youth engagement in the sector. And this is going to start off as workshops on everything from getting feedback from young people, young people on boards, youth led comms, supporting youth social action. And then it's going to evolve into a space to advocate for others in our sector to do more on youth engagement. So how can you guys get involved? We're on to the last slide, please. Um, so there's four key ways. The first one is join that youth engagement collective action working group, which is starting in February. You can uh, email me there uh, and I will add you to the list and we'll also share it in the bulletin. Um, engage with the youth steering group when they're um, becoming more involved in that youth, um, sorry, that collective action and all of our policy and influencing work. Um, share opportunities for youth engagement with me, so that's training, funding, resources, I'll put those in the youth bulletin and share the link to the youth bulletin with the young people you work with. And finally, uh, I'm available if you want to have a one-to-one -to, -one to discuss how you can increase youth engagement in your, all, in your own work so we can be role models for the wider sector too. And I will pass back now to Gina and Sam, but thank you very much. Thank you so much, Becca. And just want to say a massive congratulations. Becca's been with us just a matter of months. And um, I think you'll have noted there that this work started in May and to have come so far in such a short amount of time. And I think testament to it is the um, involvement of young people today and, and yesterday over the summit. So well done, Becca. And congratulations on all this work. It's super exciting. Um, also, big connection is that this week is I Will Week. Um, and that is where one of the kind of seeds of this youth engagement work for the Fair Education Alliance came from. Um, many of you will know about the I Will movement, so check out their social media and activity um, going on more broadly. And we are looking after the education element of the I Will movement. So, um, so big shout out to I Will Week this week and a great time to launch our youth engagement strategy. The next slide. So, so just to previous slide, please. Yeah, thank you. So um, just to recap, we are a movement. I think that's the biggest thing to um, emphasize from what Gina said at the beginning. The ongoing involvement of you as members is what makes this work mean anything, um, be powerful, and the action is only as strong as, as what you all get, give and, and contribute. So mention you are an FEA member at sector events. Shout and be a loud and proud FEA member, but go beyond that. Share our FEA publications and reports. Share that collective messaging that we're, the collective priorities that we repeat again and again and again. Use that report card and highlight your membership on social media. You can see a great example there. Um, Andrew Berwick, who is the former CEO of Access Project, spotted some chat about contextual admissions and referenced some FEA work on this, um, which was a great example but there'll be many more. Just make those connections and, and link back to this collective vision we all have um, as an alliance. So finally, we want to introduce the team properly and all of our wonderful um, trustees and board of advisors so that you can um, have those names to some of the, so faces to some of the names that you'll see over email. So um, you can see the pictures of our absolutely incredible team there. Um, Gina and I as co-CEOs, um, we've mentioned quite a lot of the team already, but I just wanted to flag um, Ellie Lee is our office manager who looks after all things um, financial, admin support. She looks after our info inbox as well. Um, so she might um, be in touch with you in, in response to info emails. Hi, Ellie, do you want to come off mute? <clears throat> Hello. <laughs> Couldn't find off me, but <laughs> brilliant. Thank you, Ellie. And the other person we haven't mentioned so far is our fantastic head of impact and evaluation, Rachel, who looks after um, not only our own internal impact and evaluation as an organisation, but also supports our award winners with their impact and evaluation. So again, Rachel, if you want to come off mute. Hi everyone, uh, I've so enjoyed meeting lots of you uh, over the last couple of days and especially the group that I had dinner with last night. I hope you're all having a great time. 
Fabulous. And another very exciting announcement is many of you will know I'm expecting my first baby in February 2022. Um, and I'm delighted to say that we couldn't be more thrilled. I'm leaving my first baby, the Fair Education Alliance, but we couldn't be more thrilled to announce that we've appointed Janine Hyatt, who has been active over the last couple of days, so you may have already seen, currently Head of Networks at Teach First and will be joining us early in the new year. Um, so Janine, do you want to come off mute and say, hi yeah hi everyone i've so enjoyed getting to know many of you better over the last couple of days this event has been amazing um and i just feel really kind of fired up after all the keynotes and all the conversations and um i can't wait to get to work next year um although it's sad that by the nature of the job i won't be overlapping with sam but um very nice to see all of you yeah, we, we'll, we'll have two weeks handover and then we'll um, have to see, we both live in Walthamstow, so we'll have to see each other in Walthamstow. So that is our fantastic team and um, I'm so excited to be leaving it in such capable hands with all of the current team and Janine um, when I go off in February. So next slide. We'll just introduce our trustees. So we heard from our amazing chair, Dr. Vanessa Ogden, yesterday opening the summit. And then you will recognize many faces there in terms of our um, just fantastic array of trustees. Um, Dame Julia Cleverdon, Richard Hardy, who both may be here still, I think. Um, Natalie Pereira, Zulam, um, Elamogo, Brett Wigdort, Lamadeo Danier, and Russell Hobby, the CEO of Teach First. And then last but not least, our board of advisors. Um, we have a, our board of advisors is a supplementary group to our trustees who are representatives from across education, business, policy, um, and the third sector um, who have achieved great things themselves and are champions for the Fair Education Alliance collective mission. We meet with them twice a year and they provide input to our overall strategic direction. Um, so if you do come across them in your day-to-day -day dealings, make sure you mention that you're FEA members as well. Brilliant. So that is it in terms of us sharing. Now we will invite you to share back with us. So we have four questions that we would love your responses on. We'll give <laughs> about uh, four to five minutes to fill out this quick form. And what we'd love to know are, what did you like most about the strategy? So what's like, whoa, this is really exciting. What um, are your ideas? So what perhaps is not included that you want to see or what are different ideas that it sparked for you of, oh yeah, and you could do this. What are your main questions? So what wasn't clear that you would like us to get back to you on? And then any other thoughts that you have that we can follow up on. So we've asked for your email address within the survey. So if you want to include that, that ensures that we know who's written it and we can ensure we provide the responses to you. So go ahead and click on that. We've got some nice music to play and give you a few minutes to submit your responses. And then we will be having time to get your input and actions as we go forward. <laughs> 